Are you prepared for an outcome where they don't want to be found? That's a, yeah. Would it hurt? Absolutely. Yeah. But we that's know. their choice, and we know that can we happen. We know that can happen. Welcome back to the show. Joining us via Skype is reporter and host of Long Lost Family, Lisa Joyner. Hey, how are you, Lisa? I'm so good. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Long Lost Family first aired in 2016. What got you involved in the project initially? You're doing such good work. It's so funny. I, it feels like I've been doing it my entire life because being an adopting myself and going through my own personal journey, it sort of amplified my interest in a show like this. And I thought, boy, there's so many amazing people and stories to be told. And um, so when the time came and, and TLC was doing this show, I was like, hello. <laughs> I got to do this show. It's part of my life, you know? So um, it's, a, it's a labor of love. It's really a passion project for me. Well, you and your husband adopted your daughter. Does she ever mm -hmm. ask about her birth parents? And how do you handle that? Um, <laughs> nobody's written a book on it. So I'm just sort of doing it as, you know, as I go. But um, she does ask. She's, in fact, met her birth mother. Um, and we have a pretty open relationship. So um, I'm trying to sort of... Um, take care of the questions that I have had my whole life and, and let her know you don't have to have those questions. Um, you were born out of multiple um, decisions of love. Um, and, and, you know, we're just stumbling by and doing it the best way we can, but it seems to be working out. I cannot even imagine how hard it must be to have that conversation. I think that's great advice of how you approach it. Since the first season of the show, the popularity of at-home DNA tests like Ancestry.com has skyrocketed. How has this affected the show and your investigative process? I really wish, first of all, I'd like to say that I invested in Ancestry. Uh, second of all, they are crucial. They are crucial because we've done stories with uh, somebody who's a, a donor child. Now, how do you find, you know, a sperm donor, a, a donor parent? You know, it's nearly impossible without DNA. Um, so they are partners. I, I don't know if we could do the show as well as we do the show without them. Um, and like, you're right, there's been such a spike in these tests and we've been able to find not only one parent or one sibling, but we found whole groups. We've had, we found grandparents and we found, um, you know, uh, cousins. So it's crucial, actually, to our show. It, it really is crucial. It's almost, it almost makes me scared to do it, to know who else could be out there, but also so invigorating at the same time. You know, the new season of Long Lost Family came back recently on October 25th. What would you say makes this season stand out? We have the most incredible stories. I thought I could never be shocked or, uh, or something could be different than the, the episodes before. But I mean, we have somebody who was abandoned behind a mall um, in a trash dumpster. I mean, it's tragic. Um, and the first question I asked to her, and I said, please, I, I hate to be so frank, but why? You know, why do you want to know this person? Um, and it's, it's incredible, the stories that we've found. Um, you know, the twins, the, the premiere episode, they were just, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to express what they have been through, what they're going through, what this means to them if you're not in their shoes. But, you know, the shows have just been amplified. The people are intriguing, fascinating. We found um, a child who was looking for her siblings. That one just aired in a special long episode. So I, I don't know. I, it just it surprises me, and I've been doing this for a long time, so hopefully it will surprise and, and you know, be exciting to the audience. And have you heard from the people after the show has aired? Like, what has the reaction been post uh, the airing of some of this stuff? That's a great question. Everyone wants to know that. Um, I'd like to do um, follow-up episodes, actually, you know, because we, we've done them before, but because it's not only the happy ending. It's, it's you know, it's, it's what happens after that hug and that initial meeting. There's a lot of stuff that you go through just processing, you know, how does this person fit in my life? So, you know, it's my hope that we'll do some follow-ups because I think they're really, really important. And it's, you know, our show is so realistic. It's not staged. It's not phony. And people have to know, it's not always a happy ending. Some people go their separate ways. But, you know, to answer, some of the producers do keep in touch with these people, and it's our hope that we will follow up. 
Well, it's good because it's such a lifelong journey too. It's not just about discovering something. It's it's your relationship and building them with with them afterwards. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. curious in in terms of the show entirely. You know, when you ask people maybe the impetus for why they want to meet someone, have you ever come across an answer that you didn't think was the most genuine? Yes, actually, yeah, that's a great question too. Nobody asked that question. Um, we did a probably two stories where I felt yeah. as if it yeah. was for some sort of game, i.e. a book, um, uh, something that they were writing. But for the most part, I would say 90% of the time, 98% of the time, it is just from a primal wound that the person has that inside of them needs to be filled. And, you know, everybody has the right to know who they are and what their story is. And, um, you know, unfortunately, when it's an adoptee or, you know, our show isn't just about adoption, but it's um, people that are separated for other reasons, you know, they need to know, they need to have these answers, you know, not to have your origin story. For me, I didn't even know what my genetic background was. And I was on television. People would ask me every day what my nationality was. I mean, just basic stuff like that. So, you know, most of the time it's a genuine reason. And has there ever been an instance where somebody was interested in reconnecting, but they just did not want to do it on your show? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's happened many times. A lot of people don't want their life played out on television. You know, I, we don't, we can't blame them. You know, we, we talk to the people and <clears throat> the, the lovely thing that Long Off Family does is that, and I suggest this to anybody who is searching, is that we become sort of the conduit where we're able to help them along their journey. So it's not like, knock, 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 hey, guess who I am? Do you know what I mean? It's it's nice to have somebody sort of guide you and take you through this because it's life-changing. It's always going to be yeah. what happened before I found them and what happened after, you know?